Welcome everyone to this week's video update. Today is actually Sunday, January 15th. So this video is going out a couple days later than, than typical. Typically like to get these out on, on Friday. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump in and start with the trades in order that we made them. So starting on Monday, January 9th, the first alert that I sent out was an adjusting trade in natural gas. And we were simply rolling down the calls. So natural gas has, has started to move, uh, make a significant move down. So we simply rolled our calls from the 4.6 calls down to the 3.4. So if we take a look at natural gas, uh, you can see this, uh, you know, we had a pretty significant move up, but then it moved pretty, pretty uh, quickly down on us. So we rolled our calls down. So now if we take a look at the analyze tab, here's, uh, here's the graphic of, of what our position looks like. So we're still very centered, just waiting for this theta to, de to decay and, and give us some more, uh, you know, keep in the same range and, and give us more time to be right on the trade. Uh, we also have another trade that I'll I'll go over actually in a second because it was a new alert on an iron condor that we sent out. But let's let's wait till we get to that one. Uh, the next trade we made was in EW date EWW. This was an opening trade. Uh, we sold a, a strangle. IV was nice and high at at IV percentile was at 65. So if we take a look at EWW, we're, uh, we're still going to be fairly centered on this one. We're in the profit, but not enough to take that off yet. So we'll continue to wait and maybe take that off early next week if we get a contraction in IV. Uh, let's go to the next trade here. And the next one would be a closing trade that we did in Lululemon. So this was an iron condor that we put, put on uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, had a nice uh, contraction in Lulu in the IV, giving us a giving us a chance to take that off. So, if we take a look at Lululemon, as you can see, they on the analyze tab that there's no graph because we we took the trade off. But if we take a look at what happened here, just that nice little contraction that day right there in Lululemon gave us the uh, gave us the ability to take that off for nice for a nice profit. So that was a good trade. Next trade alert that went out was a closing trade in IWM. Kind of the same story. This was an iron condor that we had put on 11 days previously. Uh, got a nice contraction down to 39 in IV percentile. So we, we were able to take that off for a nice profit within just 11 days. So we take a look at IWM. Just this little contraction right here. Sometimes that's all it takes to really suck the premium out of those, the, those trades and give us the ability to to to, uh, to make a profit so good quick trade there uh, next alert that went out was a we put on a calendar trade we opened a trade in GLD so the IV percentile was at six and so remember with calendar trades we are looking to uh, profit from that if we get an expansion in implied volatility so we want to put those on when IV is extremely low and look for an expansion so if we take a look at GLD uh, which is the ETF for gold, you can see implied volatility is still extremely low, which is the best time to be putting on these calendars. So if we take a look, you can see it's still very centered. We're, we're in the profit a little bit on that trade, but we'll just continue to wait and, uh, and, and look for a little bit more of an expansion in IV, potentially a small down move, and we, we'll be able to get out of that at a, uh, at a nice profit. Next trade was a closing trade in Goldman Sachs. So this was a this was an iron condor that we put on, and and really this the price was hovering at the top side of our iron condor for for several weeks uh, because of the continued move up in Goldman Sachs. But we we were able to get a small move down in price, and implied volatility stayed stayed level. So we were able to take that off for a nice. 40% of max profit, which is kind of the the standard of what we're looking for uh, when we're when we're taking profits in with iron condor. So you can see we we put this on way back here, and it's just continued to kind of grind sideways to slightly higher. Uh, implied volatility gives a tiny contraction there, and that's where we got out. 
The other thing is, if you look right here, this indicates that we've got earnings coming up in Goldman Sachs next week. So we definitely wanted to be out of the trade by then anyway. So uh, even if we wouldn't have been at 40% of max profit, I would have gotten out of that trade before the earnings announcements because we don't we don't want to be in this type of trade uh, while companies announce earnings because the, the moves a lot of times can be significant. There are other earnings uh, trading strategies that we will be producing a course on uh, at a later date. But for these monthly income trades, we really want to work around earnings and be out of the trade when the uh, when the companies make those announcements. Next trade was a closing trade in SPX. So this was a this was a calendar that we had to make three adjustments on. Uh, we were able to get out of the trade for basically break even just a small a small loser i think we lost like twenty dollars on the entire trade uh but spx uh can you know continue to move higher this is the uh the s p 500 index and moved higher sideways uh, I, I was trying to get out for a nice profit here on this down move didn't have enough profit so we waited continue to move a little bit higher ended up uh ended up getting out of the trade though for uh for a break even uh after being uh, pretty significant loser right off the bat. We put the trade on initially right here. Next day had an explosive move up. So we had to add another calendar and we could just continue to massage and manage and, and adjust it again. And, and we're able to get out that at a break even. So remember, that's, that's kind of the name of the game. When you get into a defensive mode and you have to start making a lot of adjustments, really, you're just trying to get break even. And so if you can make a nice profit on your winning trades and break even on the ones that go against you, then you're going to be consistently profitable over time. Uh, next trade was a, a closing trade in XLU. So this was a straddle. This was originally a strangle that we adjusted and rolled then from January to February. The adjustments allowed us more time to be right on the trade and we were able to get out of that for a nice profit. So another great example of, of making the adjustments, giving yourself more time to be right. You can see we had this nice decline of implied volatility, price stayed steady, and, and we were able to, to bank that profit in XLU. Uh, next trade was in uh, QQQ, so in the NASDAQ. This was an opening trade, so we added another calendar. Uh, IV percentile currently around 15. I like to do these when, when IV is under 10, uh, but this was just a, it was a good candidate and um, it, it's a good trading vehicle for calendars. So if you look at QQQ, still very low. If we look at the analyze tab in the profit on this trade, not enough to take it off though. So we'll continue to, to wait in QQQ. And then uh, next trade was a closing trade in oil. So this was a, this was a really neat example uh, where we actually put this trade on a couple extra expiration cycles ago. Uh, uh, the IV is currently at six, so it, it IV is contracted uh, considerably. We had to adjust this position four times, and this is a great example. We were able to bank a, a small profit uh, by simply staying mechanical, making the adjustments that we needed, and in getting out of the trade. Um, this week so if, if we take a look at oil we, we, we just we had this you know, move significant move higher so we had to make we had to roll our puts up and we had to roll our puts up again uh, we went inverted then we had to take the whole position and roll it out to the next expiration cycle then we got just kind of a, a flat line move for for a little bit and then on that down move we were able to finally get out of the position at a, at a nice profit all along the way uh, from when we first started, we added a couple other strangles, got out of those for nice profits. So overall, a really good trade. Sometimes it just takes a, a couple months to to manage and tweak and, and get out of the trade for profit, but it paid off. And that's why you got to stay mechanical. Next trade uh, was a uh, opening adjusting trade in TLT. So uh, the bond implied volatility continues to stay high making it one of the few good trading vehicles with high implied volatility so if you look at uh, TLT uh, and actually it, it it's it contracted this week uh, this past week finally after being staying high for considerably high for for quite a while so if we look at TLT 
So here is the here is the the first iron condor that we had on. And we did this with four contracts. You can see prices over here on the upper side. We're in the profit, but not enough to take it off yet. So we'll continue to wait on that. And the trade that I just mentioned, the one that we we just put on, uh, we did this because we wanted to kind of extend that break even. So we extended our break evens up to the upside. So now we've got two separate iron condors on, one for four contracts, one for five. And sometimes I'll do that. I'll, I'll just vary the number of contracts just to make it easier to keep track of right here on your analyze tab. So you can click on and off the different positions uh, without having to do uh, too much thinking or, or research. So we've got two iron condors on. Continue to wait if implied volatility continues to contract should be able to take at least one or, or maybe both of these off for a profit uh, this week this upcoming week Next trade and our last trade for the week was a closing trade in soybeans So we closed the remaining put side of this iron condor off uh, uh, We made the we made adjustment number one last week by closing out the call side and let me t uh, go to the platform to take a look at what I'm what I'm showing you here so with uh, soybeans continuing to move down we ended up taking off our call side for a full profit and then we just had a we had our losing side that we that we kept on which was the put side and then we we kept it on kept it on kept it on it was kind of still break even to a losing trade and then we had the significant spike up in price and we were able to take off that put side for for a big profit. So we ended up having a really good profit on on the soybean trade. And then we've got an a, another iron condor that we put on uh, that we're in a nice profit right here. Now the market's closed, so that's a little bit more of a profit than we actually have in the trade. Once the once the market's open and 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 readjust the pricing, it's not going to be uh, that high. In other words, not that high of a percentage of max profit, but We'll continue to manage this and send out alerts next week. Let's go through and, and take a look at a couple other positions that we still have on. Uh, one is in natural gas. I mentioned this, the adjusted strangle we have on, but we've also got an iron condor on. I had a couple members you know, mention, hey, I, I, I'm not approved for futures, and you're sending out these futures alerts. And I understand, it, and one thing to do is either get approved for futures so you can take these trades, or if you're an IRA or something, obviously you're, you're not going to be able to take these, these futures-based uh, trades. But a lot of subscribers have futures permission, so I'm still going to continue to send out these alerts because these futures are good trading vehicles. But I'll, I'll try to do a really good mix of both stocks and ETFs and, and futures to make sure everybody has a chance to, to, to get the, uh, the trades put on. So this natural gas iron condor is still very centered. Nothing to do there but wait. Uh, in bonds, uh, let's see, we've got, uh, we've got an iron condor in bonds. So we'll, we'll look to potentially uh, take that off for profit. Still very centered. So assuming it doesn't make a massive move, we'll take that off for a nice profit uh, potentially next week. Uh, FXE, we've still got this butterfly on. So still... It's pushing up towards the right hand side if it continues to move higher we will probably add another butterfly on or if it moves back centered we we should be able to take that off for a nice profit this week fxy still very centered on this strangle we're in the profit but not enough to bank it yet so we'll continue to monitor that gdx same story strangle we're in the profit just not enough to take it off quite yet so we'll continue to send out alerts when we uh, bank those profits or need to make any adjustments. GLD, I already mentioned the uh, the calendar spread that we have on. We also have another. Uh, uh, let me let me reset this so I can so I can check the boxes. Sometimes you have to do that with the platform. Um, so that was the calendar, and then if you take a look, we still have this this vertical on because we had an iron condor. The price of gold has continued to move higher during this stretch. And so we need a little bit of a pullback and then we will exit this vertical for, you know, maybe a, you know, depending on how much it pulls back. Now this is in the January cycle. So if you look at how many days we have left, we've, uh, we've only got five days left. So I'm going to be, a, I'm going to be taking this off 
probably Monday or Tuesday, regardless of what happens. Hopefully we get a little bit moved down. If not, we'll take that off. Remember, we already banked a full profit on the put side, but now we're going to take a loss on the call side. And typically with these, I will add another iron condor on to collect more credit. But remember, look at look at the IV and gold. It's so low that I'm not going to put on a premium selling strategy at this point in, in GLD. And that's one of the reasons I put on the calendar, because IV is so low. So we're going to take a little bit of a loss on that trade, but that's just part of trading. Uh, what else do we got here? Uh, XLF. Oh, yeah, XLF. So we've got... Um, in XLF, we've got this strangle that we had adjusted, and so we're we're, and then we rolled it from January to February, so we're a little bit in the profit there. Uh, we need it to move a little bit down to 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 take that off for a profit. Uh, as an adjustment, we added to collect more credit. We added another straddle, which is also in the profit. So if you add these two together, you can see we we've we're kind of centered. We've got a nice wide break-even range. So we'll continue to monitor those. We'll, we'll manage those as two separate trades, but you can also look at it as one uh, to uh, just to just to get an idea of what your range is uh, for the underlying price. So I uh, already went over XLU. We exited that. So that wraps it up. Those are the trades that we made from last week and the pos current positions that we have on. Look for some more good trades this week, and we'll talk to you next week. See you then.